Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching and today it's a bit of a big reveal. This is the Warlord Titan. I've been building my army up to destroy it. Um, spoiler, I didn't destroy it yesterday. We are having a second game today though, but I thought this morning we'll film through a quick walkthrough so that we can show off this uh, God of War. So I hope you enjoy the coming chat. Let's just have a chat through this then for a point of scale. These two guys you'll have seen on the channel. Significantly smaller than the Warlord. Right, mate, so you want to talk us through what you've done with this? Yeah. Um, so just pointing out that it's not finished. Um, things that haven't been done are sort of flames and smoke that's going to come out of here. Flames and smoke at the bottom with the light effects as well, which I'll use an airbrush to do, you know, uh, you know, sort of glowing of the flames coming out of the broken, you know, destroyed gargant. Um, also object source lighting off of the plasma things there so there's things that aren't done yet on this and also dust and things around the feet you know where it's been stomping and all the rest of it so bits and pieces so but, should we do a top down chat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so magnetized um so that um you know, pretty standard stuff so that i can also put the uh the havoc or whatever these launcher things whatever they're called um but this weapons fit that's on here and now is the best stat wise which is why you know i used it in the game we had yesterday and particularly effective it was um, through the game the bellicosa volcano cannon is that the right word yeah, yeah. um highlight of the game for me yesterday i think for all of us who were playing uh, was the warlord sorry warlord warhound titan of mine being deleted uh, in one shot by one of these which is particularly nasty uh, part of the reason i've put this one here is he did take a volcano cannon to the face, completely unhurt, which I thought was uh, a highlight. Uh, sorry, yeah. mate, carry no, on. no, no, that's all right. Yeah, so that 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 warhound, you know, I took the um, void shields off with this lighter laser array, and then the two bellicosas just, yeah, as you say, deleted warhound, which and it was on full strength, yeah. completely Absolutely untouched. Absolutely unhurt. It was brutal prior to that. Um, <clears throat> and these do have a lovely range as well, 120 inches. So we were playing on a nine foot board and this was, could literally, this was sat in one corner and could you touch anything in the, in, in the board. Um, so a, a really nice bit of kit. But things, so things to point out in terms of the modeling on this, um, the kits themselves are quite plain. So I did add lots of things to it. One of the things I really noticed is there are no equilas on it, apart from these shoulder pads. There are no, you know, sort of, there's no iconography on the, on, the, on the raw model. So I added this, which is a cast from a Bane Blade piece. I added these numbers here. Um, so what you cast it with, was that blue stuff, was it? Blue stuff um, you know, to make the mold on the, on the Bane Blade part. And then obviously uh, sort of green, green stuff and, and millipart mix to create the thing. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's got the the um, uh, Len the, Lenten head. Yeah, the yep. optional head that you can pick up. I yep. don't even know if they do that anymore. Do they pick I think up they do. a good year or so? Do they still do it? Yeah, yeah, I think they do. Um, but yeah, there's loads of things on here. So like that. Also, one of the things that I did, because they didn't have it anywhere as well, are the um, Mechanicum symbols. So on the back of every single gun on this, and also on the engine and various other parts, I put these Mechanicum symbols. So there's you've done that down the base there, haven't you? If we zoom into the section there, on yeah, the, yeah. whatever that part is, the sort exactly. of stabilizer section. There. So there's there's also one on the back of this particular piece of um, equipment as well, just because you know obviously it is a. Uh, a god, you know, Omnissiah, god machine. Um, uh, so you'd expect to see Mechanicum symbols all over it. So I put those on, and as I say, you know, Aquila. Where, where, yeah, I just didn't think there were any <laughs> other things that you'll note. So um, battle damage, because we're as we yeah, move okay, down. So battle damage. Uh, which yeah, made like, you choose to do that then? Because that's quite brutal to it, a. It is. Yeah, <laughs> I've never, I've, I've never done you know, battle damage quite like that. Yeah, where there's layers of of material one after the other. But I really like the opportunity to do it on this because obviously. The resin's very thick. You know, you've got uh, you know, almost a millimetre's worth of resin to chop. So I did basically, obviously, take a bit of a risk and cut the, the panel off, because I'd never done it before. Cut the, cut the panel there, and I had layers, of, as you can see, of sort of mesh and other stuff. And then I just layered it um, in a way that I thought would show sort of the compound structure of the, the plate. Um, and you peeled back the aquila yeah. on there, didn't you? So that's... Did you have to, like, slice through the resin exactly. to then peel that yeah, back? I heated yeah. it. You know, under some hot water so that it was softer and then just used a scalpel blade to you know peel it back and then um, we've got on the shields there these are all are these all handmade out of brass is that how you do these <clears throat> yeah so the the um purity seals there are 
two types of purity seal. One is the ones with the skulls in, which are basically a little plastic skull kit that you get from GW. I've just sliced the face off the skull and then put it into a, a, yeah, a little ball of milliput. And over here, these are off of the uh, night kit. So you get these symbols that go from, on the night kit when you can do the, the version from yeah. the Mechanicum. The uh, transfers from the knights as well. The transfers, no, the trans. So the transfers are from, from everywhere. That is from the the night kit. That single transfer. That's from a third party. I can't remember what he's called, um, but he does really nice um, transfers. And the actual, uh, the actual bits of parchment are thin, zero point one millimeter thin uh, copper sheets. Which I obviously cut and then. And you then drop the trans. Oh, that's no, hand painted, isn't it? On Everything, there, everything's there. hand painted on there, apart from where you see these little symbols on there. So if there's a skull, or you know, like this is a, um, a dark angels from a dark angels transfer thing, but it looks you know good. Um, so yeah, and I did them in different colours. So the gold, gold ones with the long, long parchment. They're the the most. Uh, you know the, the most honorific as it were and then you've got the black ones which are the second grade and then on the then you've got these red ones which are the lowest grade sort of rewards as it were and there and the, the two types in my sort of thought was that the skull ones were more to do with military activity and the mechanicum ones were more or like blessings and blessings things. to make sure the things actually worked you know because so, obviously they're it's reminded me looking at your gun there you've yeah. named every weapon every you? every one of them has a different name yeah and obviously a serial number. Cirrus, so, yeah, and numbers there. Yeah. Very, oh, the, I think the little details will bring it out. So the colour scheme, we should talk about that before we move down the model. Yeah. Yeah. So what's made you go for the, the black and red? And it's all so, washes and things, isn't it, more than anything else? Yeah, so the original idea was to do this as a sort of brass, uh, fundamentally brass, um, uh, bronze rather, bronze um, armour with, you know, the sort of beautiful pattern of the blue sort of turquoise staining that comes on it and I did do a, 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 had a go at the turquoise staining on one of these things here you could just about see where I did a wash it but I really didn't like uh, and by this point I'd kind of had enough and I didn't want to be messing around with it anymore this game was starting you can see there's little bits of it on there yeah but I didn't really like the um I mean, actually, it looks cool seeing it now. Yeah, but frankly, I just didn't want to do the entire, you know, go over the entire model again. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because obviously there's a lot of time gone into this. But you have got quite a lot of. <coughs> I know it's on the brass there. That's. Yeah. A lot of dry brushing and just. Oh yeah, absolutely. Up, yeah. That is exactly it. So, it's uh. So underneath, uh, can I take anything off? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see you've got a copper spray. All of the all of the um armor is copper spray, Tamiya copper spray, which is a beautiful color in itself. And then I dry brush it with a bronze uh, pigment based uh, paint. Uh, when I say that, I mean it's a powder. It, it's a, a tub of powder that you mix with um, with uh, you know, the, a mixing agent. Oh, God, I'm trying to, you know, Lamian, yeah. Lamian whatever it's called. Um, and, um, and then it's just a process of a couple of, you know, a dry brush, then a wash. With, well, well, I painted it over with the contrast black. And then once the contrast black was done, I then dry brush it again with the brass. Um, and finally, after the final dry brush, I'd wash it over with null oil in this case. So, so it gives kind of like a nice, <clears throat> not quite matte, but not quite gloss kind of it, it's really nice. I think it almost almost like a living metal, if that makes any kind of sense. So the, I always like doing anything that is metal, you know, ultimately, even if it's going to be a colour afterwards, so like a marine armour, I would start with a metallic base coat and then put the colour on top because then you can sort of wear away, almost. you can show wear better. I, yeah. I like, because I don't like these things looking as if they've just come out of the salon, you know, because they, they have been fighting for thousands of years. So I don't like oh, them. Absolutely agree. And as you know, I, I always I always undercoat with metallics. But not always, but pretty much. Mm. Now looking at the weapon, I thought you moved that. You've obviously taken the side panel off there. That's two oh. axes. Then now you've not magnetised these weapons on, have you? No. So you've got a screw, literally a screw through it. Yeah. So, um, so how do you find the counterbalance in them? Because obviously, if I'm picking up the plasma, that's no, not 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 the finished one. Yeah. But you've got the screw hole there. So yeah. are these literally balanced just so that no, the no, weight's no, fine? No, 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 no. So um, you you won't be able to see it, but I actually cut. On the on the other side, a recess where the 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 bolt, uh, sorry, the nut is on the other side and it's glued in. Yeah. So these actually, you I, I you use a screwdriver and it does 
go into the thread of the the nut on the other side. Yeah, so the, you it. can you can tighten this as 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 much as you know you can tighten this so it can't move at all. I didn't fully tighten this one, but you leave it with a bit of bit of movement. Yeah, and that's the same with the leg joints here, isn't it? You've done these with <coughs> bolts, haven't you? Rather than no, that's these are the only two pins pin. through here. It's just a, a, a brass rod pin. Um, but yeah, those are the only the only bolt um, uh, pins in the entire model are in here at the at the knee joint, and they're going across. Because right it seems there. a much better balanced model than we talked about this yesterday, didn't we? About the uh, the warhounds. Mm. Obviously, um, I think in the room we've had three, four, five warhounds over the years, and the warhound really doesn't balance very no, well. No. You've got to be really careful with how you pose it. Whereas this is seems like a much more balanced it, model. It is absolutely. And that's on, on and talking about balance. Obviously, the stance that I've given him is not standard. Most Titans you see built are stood flat, and you know because it is risky when you're putting this together. You know, and, and it, it's, it's the most complicated model, obviously, that they do biggest, uh, and so you want to be fairly conservative usually. But I, you know, I, I wanted to take a bit of a risk and giving them a more dynamic pose, you know, and so... you melted a gargant down practically and, and had it yeah. stood through. So have you pinned the feet to the base, or no, is that...? it's all just glued. Everything is just with a, a, a lot of super glue. Uh, and, and you've got I, properly industrial-grade stuff, haven't you? You've I've, used... Yeah, yeah. I, use, I use, you know... But, I mean, it's not expensive. It's like £5 a, a pot. And I always use activator to, to make the glue um, stick much faster within, you know, two, three seconds. Because uh, you know it just speeds up the whole process so much, and also where occasionally where you do have to, you are literally holding the pieces together with your hand. Um, just you know, it's, you're sort of like it's a fine. Anyway, it helps. It yeah. really helps. Activator really helps. Now I've zoomed into the um, Aquila you've got on here. That's obviously Ooh. a scratch build. Yeah. So what's what have you done that one with? So that Aquila that again is to make the whole thing look more. Um, like you'd expect, you know, uh, you, uh, these machines, obviously the pinnacle of uh, Mechanicum um, creation. So you'd expect them to be, you know, and also in, in military terms, um, the pinnacle as well. So you'd expect them to have a lot of love and, you know, have achieved many things. So anyway, these are, there's lots of references here to um, its achievements over its history. So the this Aquila is off of a uh, Adeptus Sororitas HQ model, I can't remember what it's called, but um, the the wings are bent much, much closer together, so I had to use a, uh, a, a cigarette lighter to melt the plastic somewhat from behind and then f force the wings outward so they'd actually sit against the, the chest and here. And the section underneath, that, that's... Is that a brooch you used and then brass yeah. panelling for the... Yeah, so again, I mean, this this circular, the wreath, basically, the, the you know, wreath of conquest, uh, you know, uh, etc. You know, cl classic sort of iconography is a woman's brooch, lady's brooch I bought off eBay for maybe two quid, something like that. And then the the scroll work here is a, more of this copper... It's all your, your brass sheet. And yeah, your copper, copper sheets, sheet, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. And the same thing with... Uh, onto what you've got a lot, obviously, around the model of the <coughs> shield you've done. Now, they, what are these taken from? The shields are, well, you get the transfers from, you know, you know, medieval gaming systems. And I glued them, on, so I transferred them onto Plasticard and then cut them out. And the idea behind that was, well, partly it's just because I really like, you know, um, you know, heraldic stuff and to make it look more knightly and, and all that chivalrous sort of references. But my sort of, in terms of the fluff... Um, explanation in my mind was that you know over the hundreds or thousands of years that this thing has been in operation different um, you know, crews and patrons etc have been associated with it and their family crest would be added to it you know if you know if it was appropriate yeah, so quality just show yeah length of service and everything yeah, yeah. and the bottom this is this is the last thing I think you were sharing on our um, whatsapp group was the What's it called? Not the, banner, banner. The, the banner. Yeah, banner. Yeah, sort of. It's so, just... sci-fi nerds amongst you, which obviously is going to be all of you, um, will recognise a lot of the places on here. Uh, yeah, sci-fi and fantasy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my personal favourite is we have Eternia uh, on there, which I think is hilarious. And uh, yeah, that's just that's a nice, idea, really nice idea. Well, that took you a fair while, didn't it, when you were sharing it, that? Yeah, that took that banner from you know from cutting out the copper 
um, thing, you know, doing the measuring and, and planning and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, not including, you know, doing the internet research for the different places to put on there, because obviously there was a longer list than that. Um, on the day, that thing from start to finish maybe took eight, somewhere between eight and 12 hours to do. <laughs> Commitment. <laughs> I like that, though. Mm. And then um, so the last bit that stands out is you've got the arrows on yeah. one plate and then you've got keys on the other yeah so again i like the fact that the the shoulder pads have got you know uh sort of 3d um iconography on it so i thought well why not other bits as well so these as you pointed out the keys and the arrows again they're bits of tat off of ebay you know a couple of quid whatever and i, I pressed them into blue stuff um to get to, to basically make a mold of them because they unfortunately they weren't the type of metal they were originally made from wasn't pliable enough just to bend. You can't slice them off and bend them. No. Yeah, so I, I had to make moulds and cast them out in, in blue green stuff. So those are green stuff, basically cast, which I've stuck on. And the iconography, again, you know, <clears throat> I did research on herald her heraldry. So the colours, in heraldry there are a set number of colours that you use and each colour means something. So white and silver are equivalent. Um, and they stand for purity and, and things like that. Red is uh, the colour of, of you know um, military strength. So obviously I've got red arrows here. So that combination, obviously the arrow is a, a, a military symbol and it suggests uh, ranged attacks, which obviously is appropriate, um, and also you know hitting your target. So I like the you know so that's appropriate iconography for that. On the keys, crossed keys, um, and this is quite a Catholic symbol, what you've got there. Not that that's why I've done it, but it just, you know, you, you will have seen it before. <clears throat> um, and in, in Catholicism, it is, you know, signifies Jesus giving the keys of uh, heaven to Paul, you know, St. Paul, and it's the symbol of the the, the, the church, the Catholic church. And they and they also use a, 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 a silver and a gold key. I don't know why the colours are different, but I kind of like that. And I like the fact that the, you know, this obviously has got nothing to do with Christ, you know, religion, but I like the fact that this iconography would still be there, you know, in the 41st millennium. Yeah, 40,000 years in the future. They don't know what it actually means anymore. They just use it, yeah. I like that. Yeah, That's yeah. a really good idea. So I suppose the other uh, thing to talk about, we'll flip it around in a second and have a quick bit on the back. I know you've not done uh, everything you want to on the back of the model, but um, I suppose weapon choice, let me foot in the camera there. Um, so you've fitted it with those volcanic cannons, now you've, you've got the plasma one you're going to finish and the Gatling yep. cannon. Now you haven't bought the Quake cannon no. or the other one have you because you just what, don't like the rules. Yeah, no. So, I mean, frankly, you know, as I've said, it's these. this is the best weapon to it. When you do the math hammer on the, you know, the, the different weapons options, it is the best. But I, the other weapons that I like, the look of, you know, is just purely on the aesthetics with these. The power fist as well, but I've kind of, I, yeah, I think I, I just, it's just not good enough at games terms to even contemplate. Um, not that we play, but I mean, the thing is, I suppose, for, the, for those in the channel, we've been gearing up for this game for what? About a year? Yeah, yeah. About a year this has been gaming up for. Um, so I suppose it's not that we're gonna, you're going to play with the Warlord overly often. <laughs> no. <laughs> Crikey. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, good. Yeah. Right, should we spin it? Oh, the other thing is, can you lift it so you can see how you've done the centre section? Yeah. Because this is your only other pin, isn't it? You've got pins through the legs. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. And you're only, and obviously on the guns, but they're not uh, weight-bearing pins, right. but the actual model's been secured in the centre, hasn't it? It's just interesting for people to see how it's done. So that's just a big chunky pin yeah. that's drilled up and holds it in place. Yeah. And then there is a slight bit of movement here because you, you said thing, the, the, the bolts in the legs, there's no, they're not sealed there in. There was no point gluing it. So I thought, well, I won't bother then. Yeah. And I suppose it adds that element when you're lifting that body up and down, it can flex a little. It's a bit of flex, yeah. yeah. I mean, for whatever, I mean, I don't know that it makes any difference, but I just thought, yeah. well, I don't need to. So should we try and it. spin it round? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll spin it, hang on. Can you do it with yeah. <laughs> Yes. And we are for, for those of you listening, we are sat on the floor. Uh, we've did floor hammer yesterday because <laughs> yeah. the um, table's not quite big enough to actually get on, so it's uh, cleared a bit of space and it's been floor hammer. So, which, and that, and when there's a few blokes of uh, our age, there's a few achy knees and dodgy backs uh, oh, today. Is that? Yeah. So, and again, back here, so you've got the you said the Mechanicum symbols yep. on here added. and the nice uh, entryway. Uh, on, onto the... And the defence Laz cannons are there. Yep. 
Yeah, the defence weapons are actually pretty good. Yeah. Well, a couple of times yesterday didn't do a great deal, did they? Because I suppose the um, the moderati fire in the guns was laughing so hard oh, at well, the uh, that knights too. that he just removed. Yes. And he uh, forgot how to shoot the pieces. Yeah. So I think the, uh, the <laughs> there was what what one turn where you obliterated three knights in their entirety uh, with shooting. That was the same turn that this guy took. The volcano cannon to the I, face. I particularly like taking out your flyer as well. Yeah, that was painful. That was, <laughs> yeah, from about 90 inches across the wall or something ridiculous, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? it was, and it was um, untouched. Wasn't and it? Yeah, it yeah. was, uh, yeah, that was not nice. Um, One bellicosa to the face, yeah. There's a, there's a definite more. need when you're playing these things to get first turn, I think. That was, yes. the, uh, that was the piece. It was pretty much that. Although I would like to, to, to point out, I did win the game on objective points. Although I'll drop a picture in here of what actually survived the game. So the moral victory absolutely went to the Imperial side, but uh, Papa Nurgle will claim the win purely because I spent the game grabbing objectives and uh, being killed, I think really was the mm. was the gist of the game. So that's the back there. Very nice. I don't think there's anything else more to say, is there? Are you anything well, you want I mean, to talk about? No, I, yeah, no, I think, you, I think you're good. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. Oh, actually, yeah, in terms of... I'm going to put... Um, a data smith here and a couple of uh, uh, Mechanicum geezers with, with guns as well. Which sure, would be interesting. I like that you've got little. So you have to so many little transfers and painting details you've done on there. You could oh, I put spend these ages on as well. looking. So everywhere where it's appropriate, I put these off of the night kit. On the, oh, I yeah, well. remember I said, Do you need more? And you're like, No, you've got plenty. Because obviously you've built what? Four or five nights yourself? Six? Uh, four. Four. Yeah. Oh, on the nerdly one that's on the shelf that's the. Oh, yeah, that's five, actually, yeah. yeah. Smashing, well, I'll spin it around, drop some pictures off. Well, cheers for that, mate. Nice. Um, I will, yeah, get some views and things off your uh, your glory and your work. I have no problem with that. Yes, <laughs> Stealing um, your glory. Fine with that too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Smashing, well, I hope everyone enjoyed that. And uh, as the usual thing, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. And uh, I'm sure I'll be featuring pictures of this on the uh, Instagram and things. Uh, some more. Cheers, everybody.